Now it's time to go over footprinting. So what is footprinting? Well, footprinting is getting an idea of the entire scope of your target. That means not just the scope that you were given, which may be an address block or it may be a domain name that even may be a set of address blocks. Now what you want to do is you want to figure out all the information that's associated with that in great detail as you can possibly get. So you want a list of domain names as you're going to go through this. You probably want some sort of database or Excel spreadsheet or something to keep track of all the information because you're going to have a lot of it at the end. You want to be able to find the information quickly. So having some sort of either notepad going with your notes or as I said, a spreadsheet or a database. So if you can get uh, organized in that way, you want to keep all those sorts of things down. So in this case, I want to do some sort of search on suppose, let's say edureka.co. Now I need network blocks. So, so far we found out that just made up IP addresses because I'm just putting information down, but I need network blocks. So you may have one IP address that you can find externally, or you're going to want a whole range of internal blocks. And you can do a little bit of digging if you aren't provided those. You want specific IP addresses for critical systems, web servers, email servers, databases, if you can find any of these things of those sorts. And you want system architectures. And what kind of stuff are they running? Are they running Intel? Are they running Windows? Are they running some Unix systems? What are they running? What kind of access control lists they have? These are going to be hard to get, but you may be able to guess them. And you can guess these by doing port scans. So what sort of responses you get back from the port scans with the filters and or what you don't get back will tell you about if there's an IDS around or some you want to do a system enumeration or you can get access to a system somehow you want to know usernames, group names, so on. So the basic idea of footprinting is gathering information. Now, if you can get access to systems somehow, you want to know usernames, group names. So you want system banners, routine tables, SNMP information if you can get it, DNS host names if you can get those. So now this is for both internal and external on the side. If you're doing an internal penetration test or ethical hacking engagement, you want to know the networking protocols that are there. Are they using TCP IP or are they using some UDP or are they on IPX or SPX? Are they using DECnet or Apple Talk or are they using some sort of split DNS? In other words, do they have internal DNS servers that give different form for their external and will it give different information if you want to check for remote access possibilities? Now in the footprinting process, you want to be very exhaustive. You might want to try and take out email addresses, server domain name services, I mean IP addresses or even contact numbers. And you want to be very exhaustive with your approach. You don't want to miss anything out because if you do that, you can continue and also provide some some launching points for additional attacks or tests that you may be able to do. But this is definitely a starting point of the types of information that you need to have as you go about footprinting your target. Now, next thing that we are going to see is very interesting. This is one of the many common tools that are out there on the internet, and that is the Wayback Machine, or also known as archive.org. Now, while it might not give you all the information that you need, but it gives, certainly gives you a starting point. And what we're talking about out here is the Wayback Machine, or archive.org. So let me just give you a quick look at what archive.org looks like. Okay, I already have it open out here. So out here, what you can see is how a website looked like around some time ago. So for example, if you want to look at what Google look like, so you just have to search for Google out here and wait for results to come back. Okay, so we see that Google goes way back to 1998. So that was the last capture or the first capture rather. It was the first capture by the Wayback Machine and we can see that it has a screenshot of November 11th and how Google looked. So let's see what Google looked like in November 11th of 1998. So this is what Google looked like. It was, there was actually nothing to it. It just said, welcome to Google, Google search engine prototypes, and it has some link. So yeah, this is what the Google search engine looked like. It had a Stanford search, it had a Linux search, and you could do all sorts of stuff. You could just put the results. Now, what I'm trying to tell y'all is you can see the evolution of a website through time through the Wayback Machine. And this gives you rather in, in informative look into how website has actually evolved. Okay, now that we know what footprinting is and how it falls into the whole reconnaissance process, 
So let's go over a couple of websites to do a little bit of historical digging about companies and the types of infrastructure that they may be using. And this information, of course, is useful so that we can narrow down our focus in terms of what we want to target against them for attacks. Now, over time, we've improved our awareness about what sorts of information we may want to divulge. So several years ago, you may have gone to a company's website and discovered that you could get email addresses and names of people in positions that you may find relevant. And there were all sorts of bits of information that could be used against the company. And over time, we have discovered that those sorts of pieces of information probably don't belong on a website where they can be used against a company. And so they've been pulled off. Now, it used to be also that Google had the ability to pull up information that it had cached so far. For example, if a website was no longer available or if it was temporarily down and offline, there was a little cache button that you could click when you did and the Google search and you could pull up that cached information. So even though the website wasn't available, you could still get information from Google's servers. Now, Google's removed that, so we don't have that ability any longer. However, there is an internet archive that we can use. So this thing is called the Wayback Machine, and I have it open out here. So it's archive.org slash web. So archive.org is a website that gives us information about other websites and how they looked like in years ago. And by so I'm going to go to the Wayback Machine, which you can see is at the archive.org. And I'm going to go and try and search for edureka.co. So now we're going to take a historical look at edureka.co's website. And you can see we've got some years and they've got information going back up to 2013. So let's look at what this website looked like when it was just 2013. OK, there don't seem to be any snapshots out here. I wonder what's going on. OK, so. Let's go to 2014 and the first snapshot seems to be on the September 12th of 2014. Actually, it's on May 17 too. So let's see what that looked like. OK, so this is what Eddie Reka looked like back in 2013 or rather 2014, September 12th, 2014 to be actually exact. Now you can see that we have some live classes and all these pictures are there and they've got this weird picture of this guy out here. I don't know why that was a thing back in 2014. Now we can browse more advanced screenshots or rather the screenshots that were taken later on and see how this company has evolved with this infrastructure and the way it actually lays out its content. OK, so it still has not evolved, but I can go a couple of years ahead and see what this has actually evolved into. So if I were to go to December 2016. So this is what it looked like in 2016. And we can see that they've added this weird box out here about browsing and courses. They have added a search bar that kind of looks weird, but uh, it's mostly because my internet is slow and it's not loading all the elements. They've also changed how they've actually laid out the courses. We can also see a change in the prices, I guess. So yeah, this tells us about how it evolves as a complete website. Now this other website that I want to talk about is called Netcraft. Now Netcraft does internet research, including the types of web servers that companies run. And they have a web server surveys. You can see here as we scroll that Apache web servers has 64.3% of the internet market, of course, and that's followed by Microsoft with 13%. Interesting information may be useful information, but even more useful than that is looking at what different companies run for their websites and you can see here okay so let's try and search for edureka.co out here so let's just put in the website url and let netcraft generate the site report so as you can see that some of the stuff is not available we know that the netblock owner is by amazon technologies the name server is this thing right here the dns admin is aws dns host master we also have the ip address we can go for a wire look up the ip on virus total we can do that there is no ipv6 presence so that's some information that we can see so we can obviously opt out to not target ipv6 ranges then there's also reverse dns then we also have a bunch of hosting history so this is a history of it and we know that it's hosted on a linux system with an apache web server and it was last seen and this was when it was last updated so this is some very useful information you can also get information on stuff like netflix so if you just type okay i, I, I just spelled that wrong so let me just change it from the url out here so if you go and type for netflix.com and you'll see that it'll show you all sorts of information. So as you see that it's on an AWS server, it's an Amazon Data Services Ireland. 
and this is all the hosting history that it goes along with it has some send the policy frameworks domain based message authentication and reporting confirmations and there's all sorts of information that you can get about websites and their web servers from netcraft so the Wayback Machine along with Netcraft make up for some interesting tools that are available on the internet from which you can do a little bit of your reconnaissance process.